My name is Bill. Um, I am the CEO of the Viceroy Hotel Group. I love hospitality, and I love the hotel industry, and I've loved it from my very first job in hospitality, which is when I was about 15 years old. Twice a week, I'd get on my bicycle in Limerick in Ireland, and I'd cycle about three miles over to my uncle's guest house, uh, and I would take out the trash. And then the following day, I would go back on my bicycle and I'd roll back in the empty trash cans. So I am that cliche in our industry that's had the career that has gone from the trash room to the boardroom. May very well be on my way back again, who knows? <laughs> and on occasion throughout my career, perhaps there have been occasions when the former has been an easier environment to operate in than the latter. But the less said about that, the better. So why am I here this morning? Um, so I'm here this morning to talk about something that I believe profoundly in, uh, which is the power of pride, and a pride-driven ideology. Pride is the purpose of a business, which I don't think we talk about enough in hospitality. What else am I? Well, whenever I walk into a room of industry colleagues, I am inevitably the guy in the room with the least meaningful job title. My title's stupid, my title sucks, right? And here's why. Having left the trash room en route to the boardroom, I wanted one thing. I wanted to be a CEO. And I set out to be a CEO. That was my journey. And that's what I thought would make me proud in this industry. Now, one of my favorite things to do in hospitality and at Viceroy and in any company I've worked with is orientation. <clears throat> I love to personally welcome new people to our company. And I remember doing an orientation when I had first started as a CEO. And as I interacted with the people, I realized just how utterly stupid my title is in comparison to theirs. And what I mean by that is, I always find myself in rooms of hotel colleagues that are extremely action-focused and for whom purpose is evident. If I'm in orientation, I might say to somebody, hi, what's your name, what do you do? And the answer I get is, well, I'm Robert, and I'm a restaurant manager. And I manage a restaurant. Restaurant manager manages restaurant. My name is Fred, I'm a cocktail server. Cocktail server, and I serve cocktails. Purpose, evident. My name is Fran, I'm an interior designer. I design interiors. The purpose is evident. My name is Bill. And I'm the chief of the executives, way. There is no purpose. It's not purpose, it's status. So at that moment, I decided that what I would do as a leader in hospitality is I'd rebrand myself. And I would rebrand myself away from working for status, and I would start to work for purpose. And I believe as leaders, that's what we're all here to do. So my name is not Bill Walsh, the chief executive of the Viceroy Hotel Group, my purpose as Bill Walsh is to be the chief pride officer of the hotel group. And what we do in hospitality and what we do in leadership is quite simply this. We make people proud. And what happens when we make people proud? Well, if we make our colleagues proud, turnover decreases, absenteeism decreases, productivity increases, and it becomes a much more fun place to be. If we make our customers proud, our guests, two things happen. One, they come back. And throughout the ages, we've always said, it's so much more cost effective to retain a guest than to recruit a guest. It costs a lot of money to find a new customer. So proud guests are guests who return. But even more important to that, in today's social media environment, with the access to the immediacy of communication, a proud guest is an immediate advocate of a brand or an experience. This is a room full of highly intelligent, highly experienced people who design and build hotels for a living. I would imagine that with a greater degree of frequency than ever before, the conversation happens about where are the content spaces in the hotel? Where's the Instagram moment? What are our guests going to show off that they have encountered in this building that they've never encountered before? We provide content for people. People have egos 
that are now facilitated by Instagram, by Facebook, and by all of those platforms. And they're proud to see something first and to communicate it to the world. So a guest, in essence, when they're proud, with access to communication platforms, they become a salesperson. We can have 150,000 salespeople around the world, depending on what our occupancy over any given period of time is, if we've made our guests proud and they go out to tell other people about it. So, I am the chief pride officer um, of our company. What is pride? Pride is defined as a personal commitment. It's an attitude that people who are proud hold. The four-letter profanity, beginning with the letter F. Now, I know it's a little bit early in the morning, but I'm going to use it. It's a, it's a dreadful word. It's filthy. It's horrible. And that has been used and has become accepted into vocabulary around the world. This F word that everybody talks about. Fine. How many of us in this room have as a career objective creating experiences, designing and building hotels that our guests will say are fine? Fine is the ultimate expression of mediocrity. Mediocrity is a virus that will enter into a business. It will eat it. It will cannibalize it from the inside out, and that business will die. And we accept it every day. Imagine the scenario. You have a guest who is staying in a luxury hotel or resort. Perhaps it's this one. Perhaps it's over festive. I'm sure they know how to charge pretty high rates at peak periods, and so they should. And maybe after a 10-night stay, that guest comes to check out with a $15,000 bill. This is what typically happens. Walk up to reception. Receptionist doesn't make eye contact, because it's all about the technology. Looks up at the guest, goes, checking out, yes. Incidentally, that's the second most inane question that we have in interaction with our guests. My other least favorite is at the opposite end of the experience, when the guest arrives at a hotel, and you walk up to the desk pulling your twin Delsies, and you struggle up to the desk, and you go and you look, and the receptionist looks, checking in? Well, what was that, a wild guess? Or are you like, are you, are you Mensa genius? No, I'm taking them for a walk. They need exercise. Anyway, I digress. We've, we've got the checking out. And you're going through room 712, OK, $15,000. How was your stay? Fine. OK. OK. Fine. That is not what we're here to do. That is not what hospitality is about. We're here to create memories that last for a lifetime. Proud people do not accept fine. We don't design fine. We don't build fine. We don't operate fine. We design and we build and we operate extraordinary, outstanding, amazing. I cannot wait to come back. That's what we're here to do. So proud people are people who refuse, who rebel against, who fight against the very concept of words like fine and ideas like mediocrity. By the way, it happens not just in business interactions and in physical surroundings. It happens between us as colleagues. Here's a challenge for you. Next time you're in your place of business and you see somebody you work with walking towards you and you're about to have an interaction with them, don't let it be this. Morning, George. Morning, Bill. How are you? I'm fine. OK, great. Utterly meaningless human interaction. Two human beings involved on autopilot. Neither will remember. Nobody's life has been changed because it's so banal. Here's a dare. Morning, George. Morning, Bill. Hey, George. How proud are you? Not how are you. How proud are you? Start a conversation. Try to understand the power of pride within your business. Harness it, deploy it, and remarkable things will happen. So, for me, pride is the fuel in what you need to run any business successfully, particularly in hospitality, which is to have a defined ideology. The purpose of business should never be profit. Profit in a really successful business is a byproduct of that business's ideology and business plan. A business plan, for me, is not the A to Z of business. The business plan is the P to P. In fact, it's the P to P through P. It is the purpose to profit through pride. And that's what I think a powerful business ideology in hospitality 
needs to be. So I had this idea. I thought, oh my God, I've got a pride and an ideology. What do I do with this? How do I, how do I give it a snappy label? And then I realized that I live in Los Angeles. Los Angeles is the home of Hollywood. And in Hollywood, when we have two things that come together, what do we do? Ben and Jennifer, Benifer, Brad and Angelina, Brangelina, we make up new words. So ladies and gentlemen, for ideology. And that is at the heart of what makes Viceroy tick. For me, that is at the heart of what modern luxury hospitality is all about. What we typically do in business and what we definitely do in hospitality is the following. We focus on what we do. We focus a little bit less on how we do what we do. I would argue that we do not focus nearly enough on why we do what we do. And we're going to have to wake up and start to do that for the very simple reason that the emerging consumer today, the modern luxury customer, the people who will come and sleep and eat and party and hang out in these incredible hotel spaces that we are designing, constructing, and operating, they care why we do what we do. They don't just care how we do it or what it is that we do, because the emerging consumer gives a damn. They have access to more information than ever before. They speak to each other in a way they've never done ever before. And they want to know who we are. Who are the people behind the brand? What is the DNA? What is the heartbeat? What is the humanity behind an experience in a brand and not just the experience itself? This generation will not come back for chandeliers and carpets and sofas and George Smith furniture and fancy wall coverings, whatever it might be. There was a time when that helped. Maybe it helps get people through the door the first time. What's going to bring the consumer back is having a real human connection with the brand or experience and one that makes them proud. So if you can't think for your own business and you can't articulate what is your ideology, why do you do what you do, and how would you explain that to a consumer, it's time to catch up. Otherwise, they will leave you behind. And the reason that that's happening is that other people are doing it extremely well. I like to think that we're working in what I call a brand new America. And by that, I mean an America of new brands. Bottom right-hand corner of the screen, Tesla. I'm a huge Elon Musk fan. I think he's a genius. Tesla today has a market cap of $57 billion. That's hard to make money building and selling cars. And it's hard to get a company that successful in such a short period of time. Now, how did that happen? It happened because Elon set out with a purpose. A purpose that made him proud and that he thought would make others proud and that has led to the profit. Elon Musk did not wake up one morning and say, I'm going to set up a car company because I think I could make $50 billion. He set out with a vision which was to accelerate, perhaps pun intended, to accelerate the sustainable transportation opportunity to make this planet a better place. He did it in a very stylish way through a very contemporary lens, but the purpose was very evident. Top right-hand corner, an example of the fitness experiences that have radically changed the way that we need to look at fitness experiences in our hotels, because the class psyche is everything. This is a picture from Soul Cycle. I met Julian Elizabeth, who set it up. Um, it's a wildly successful business. They've become extremely wealthy. Money was never the objective. The objective was to create in other a culture, a community, a tribe who would be bound together through a purpose. The purpose was to take the hard work out of exercise class and to have something that had a mantra people could subscribe to. What Danny has done, Danny Meyer at Shake Shack, um, is unbelievable. Uber, Airbnb. Um, these brands that have stated purpose are bringing consumers with them. And we, in hospitality, have, I believe, have been slow to jump on that journey, and we need to do so a lot quicker. So, we understand that we need to have an activated ideology. It's got to be fueled 
by pride. This is Viceroy's. I'm not saying it's the best. I'm not saying it needs to be the kind of ideology that you would have. It works for us. Um, and in many respects, it was an accidental ideology because I had just become the CEO of Viceroy back in 2012. And I'd, um, I was preparing for my first senior leadership meeting. And I had no idea what I was going to say. So I decided that I'd try to articulate, A, what I had already found in the company, and B, what I thought the why we do, the how we do of what we do, needed to be, and this is what we came up with. I thought I'd present it once, and it has since become our DNA. This is our roadmap to pride and to profit. Now, when I do this at orientation, we have a conversation about it. We activate every line of this ideology, and it takes minimum 90 minutes of conversation with my colleagues. I have 20 minutes in total this morning, so we're just barely going to scrape the surface. But I'd like to pick out a couple of lines for you. Number one, we are hosts first and always. One of the defining moments of my career was reading a book called Setting the Table about 15 years ago. Setting the Table is a book that was written by Danny Meyer, founder of the Union Square Hospitality Group, uh, and more recently, Shake Shack. And in his book, there's one phrase that literally was a light bulb moment for me. And Danny says, service is present when something happens to somebody. It becomes hospitality when it happens for them. We do something to a guest, it's service. We do something for a guest, it's hospitality. So for those of us who think that we're designing, building, and operating for a service environment, I say no. Because that's just robotic, transactional, unemotional interaction. I would say we are designing, building, and operating for a hospitality environment where we do things for people where we evidence that fact that we give a damn, where we create human connections, and where we are not afraid to display our purpose. We're thoughtful in detail. We make people expect the remarkable. Started bringing out the garbage at the age of 15. I've only ever worked in hospitality. I turned 50 this year. I know. I live in Hollywood. We have drive through everything, including a little bit of a <laughs> 15 to 50 in the hospitality industry. Here's something that I have never encountered in my entire career. Never have, and I don't think I ever will. I have yet to meet a guest who expressed to me that their purpose in coming to a hotel or a resort was to be bored. Oh, I hope nothing happens over the next 10 days. Oh my God, if these people burden me with memories to take away, God damn it. We make people expect the remarkable. They want to be stimulated mentally, emotionally. It used to be that luxury hotels were good enough just by being better. We were better than people's lives at home. One of my favorite hotels in the world is the Hotel Adlon in Berlin. The Adlon, German aristocracy back in the day, used to check out of their castles and come and stay at the Adlon. Why? Because it was the only hotel with running hot and cold water. It was better than they had at home. Now, People's lives have caught up. In fact, they have overtaken. We walk a guest into a resort and we say, welcome to your room, you lucky thing. Look at what we've made for you. We've got a 42-inch flat screen TV on the wall. And the guest thinks, I can downsize. <laughs> we've got an espresso. Look, it's got capsules. Pretty much been to cup in my life, but this will be a fun trial. Their lives have caught up and surpassed, so the physical surroundings are no longer remarkable. And if they are, they're remarkable for the first day. They don't bring people back. It is the emotional that we create within the physical which becomes remarkable. We believe in individuality and authenticity. The days of being able to build a model bedroom in a warehouse in Boise, Idaho, and go, that's it. Put it everywhere. Those days are gone. <laughs> What I believe our consumer expects us to say today is, by the way, Mr. or Mrs. Designer, whatever wall fabric, whatever sofa style, whatever lighting sconce, whatever design attribute you have put into this hotel must never be available for selection to you again. Use the same supplier, use the same theme, be inspired in the same direction, but replication, you know what replication is? It's fine. It's fine. Fine's gonna die. Be authentic. 
Be unabashed provocateurs. I presented this in Abu Dhabi to my colleagues. One of the guys said to me, Bill, hardly anybody here has English as a first language. No one's going to know what unabashed provocateur means. So we went online and we said alternative words to unabashed provocateur. You know what came up? Shameless troublemakers. <laughs> Love that. Prefer it. What this means is we have to have the courage to positively disrupt. The status quo won't get us from P to P to P anymore. We have to excite, we have to engage, we have to give people that remarkable moment. And we have to have the courage through positive disruption to make mistakes. We have to have a culture that allows us to celebrate effort as vigorously as we celebrate intent. But if you set out to positively disrupt for the sake of it, it won't work because disruption without purpose is merely interruption and noise. If we do all of these things, we create inspiration, we create wealth, we bring our customers back, we make people proud. How do you know when it's working? It's when all of the words I've been using today become the vocabulary of your company, when all of the words start to emerge naturally in interaction with your guests and with your colleagues. I've talked a lot about pride this morning, so let me finish with this. I couldn't be prouder to be here. Thank you for your, intention, for your engagement and attention. Thank you for the energy within this room. Um, thanks for having me. I wish you success for the rest of the event. Um, my name is Bill Walsh. I am the Chief Pride Officer of Viceroy. Thank you.